What's up guys, my name is Westy, and I'm back again with another Endgame video, and today sees the start of my map breakdowns for the new Endgame DLC. Basically, I'm going to be breaking down the maps left, right and centre, talking about all the different game modes that you can play, and how the map changes depending on how you play it. So, as you could tell by the title, this map review is on Nabandon Flats, which is the summer themed map in the new Endgame DLC. So just to give a brief overview, Nabandon Flats is hugely wide open. The only central point of the map is a warehouse, and basically surrounding that is a couple of farms and some small outbuildings. In complete contrast to the openness that this map actually embraces, if you venture inside the warehouse you'll find that one half uh, houses some missile launchers, and the second half actually houses a hell load of crates. And this is where I'm going to kick off with the first game mode, TDM. Now as we know from Noshar Canals, DICE do like to include these crates in TDM, and that is ever present here on the Bandon Flats. TDM focuses around the warehouse area with tight corners and a lot of choke points. You are able to flank all the way around the outside of the warehouse, but as we already know, most of the action will take place inside the crate area or inside the back of the warehouse. So if you guys are big fans of Noshar Canals and Karg Island, you're going to love this map on TDM. It's really good fun actually because I can find that the enemy are quite easy to flank because most of their mines are concentrated inside that warehouse and if you've got a bit of know-how up there then you can flank all the way around and take them by surprise. And as the warehouse is quite dark on the inside, using attack light may look like an advantage but what you really want to be doing is sticking with that suppressor that's great for TDM because with all the tight corners and stuff you don't want to be heard if somebody's just behind you and with attack light on people are going to know you're there. So next we come to Conquest which is probably a fan's favourite for Battlefield 3. The flag layout for this map is quite enclosed, it's reminiscent of something like Operation Firestorm or Caspian Border where there's a lot of space around the outside of the map for you to sort of explore but the central point is dominated by five capture points. And have no fear, all the capture points are within walking distance of each other so it's not like you're going to have to take one of the new dirt bikes to get there quickly so you can get out of harm's way. You can run them if you'd like, um, I'd still probably take a dirt bike because you can get there much quicker rather than running, but uh, never fear, if there's not one there you will get to the next capture point relatively quickly. But having all of these central points located in the middle of the map, you'll find that it's easy to flank around the enemy if they have control of a lot of the bases, because the central point warehouses are where a lot of the uh, action focuses on, because obviously it's a big landmark, people go there and try and camp out inside it. And I also find that farm, the D flag, is actually quite a, a high sort of priority point for the enemy team as well. Now cover is key on this map and with conquest there isn't much of it. So if you've got control of farm or if you've got control of the warehouse then you've, you're going pretty good on that because you're going to be able to offer yourself and your team some cover. If you don't have control of those points you're going to struggle to stay unlit on the minimap. If you don't have either of those points I suggest you go and take one because there's not a lot of cover anywhere else besides some bushes and some hay bales scattered around the map. If you are going to venture out into the desert then I suggest you take a buddy with you because you're going to need somebody to cover your back because it's so open and it leaves you so exposed to attack. So now I'm moving on to Rush and this covers squad Rush as well. Now with abandoned Flats the starting point for Rush is up behind an outcrop of rocks so you need to take one of the dirt bikes that spawns there and get in there as quick as possible. The quicker you can get to the enemy base the better on this map because you'll find that the cover is at their advantage and not at yours. So the sooner you can hop onto a dirt bike, get down and arm one of the first objectives, you'll distract the enemy completely which means you can move across the base and arm the other objective as well. I'd say the second set of MCOMs are the hardest two to take because they're encased inside the warehouse and specifically they're in the container part of the warehouse. This leaves you open to a lot of camping enemies that can sit in spaces that you can't see when you walk around the corner. So as I've said, get on one of those dirt bikes and get in there quick. Just as a side note, I have to say Rush does work extremely well on Endgame. The bases seem to flow on from one another and they don't seem stunted in any way. And the battles are pretty good as well. I haven't played a huge amount of Rush to be honest. I've been completely distracted by Capture the Flag. And this is perhaps the star of Nabandon Flats. Now I've played Capture the Flag like crazy and Nabandon Flats is a great map for this game mode. The fact that these are wide open spaces works really well for the scout helis in this situation and it works really well if you're sitting in one of the new lightweight AAs. Because you can see the enemy about half a mile away, it makes it really easy to lock on them nice and early and take them out before they get close to you. And then it works as a disadvantage as well, because the map is so open you could be sitting there in your new lovely lightweight AA and you might not be aware of the support soldier who's sitting right next to you sticking some C4 on your back. The Band of Flats works really well on Capture the Flag. Because both enemy teams can see what each other are doing at the same time, it means that constant battles can be going on left, right and centre all around the map, 
you could have three different battles going on for the same flag. But I have to say, if you are going to be trying to capture the flag in this, you need a vehicle to get back. Because the map is so open and the scout helis are scouring the ground for the enemy, you need to find cover or you need to get into a vehicle straight away. And finally we come to air superiority, but this doesn't really matter because you're not really looking at the map for this and you're not really looking at how the map plays. What I will say though is that the inclusion of the massive turbines that are in your way halfway around the map can make for some really interesting combat areas. So that's finished up my breakdown from the band and flats. This isn't my favourite map for the uh, Endgame DLC, however I really do like Capture the Flag on this map and Rush is pretty good on here as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video guys, if you did don't forget to give it a like, that would really help me out. I've been Westy and I'll see you in the next video.